unless you have a nice clean wooden floor handy, uh, your turf is laying it down on the concrete. That's going to get really dirty. And crawling around the concrete for part of a day is not my idea of fun. So you'll probably want to make up some kind of a sale table. I had a, a, a table, an old uh, extension te well, table, that's been sitting outside for quite, quite a while. You can tell by the moss on it. But that would work. But I needed to cover up that because it's going to get green stains all over the sale material. So I got a couple pieces of three quarter inch plywood and uh, put them out with long, the long side on the bottom for the foot and on the uh, other side for the luff. There was a little gap uh, where they joined so I put a block under it and screwed it together so that that wouldn't uh, be a problem. As you can see from this package, uh, the material does come in larger sizes than 4 foot by 15 foot. Either I didn't notice it when I was uh, looking at Sherman Williams or they uh, were out of it and I didn't ask. But it's plenty big enough for quite a lot of sales actually. It costs $30, but as you'll see later on, you get a lot out of this material. Uh, I put the uh, loft side on the long, first long side and the foot side on the, on the bottom long side. Uh, that would get it uh, set up and ready to go. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know whether it's a function of the batch, a different batch, or the different sizes, but these were slightly different colors. The top side, the, color, the creamy one, was from the 4x15, and the grayish white was from the 9x11. Here's what we need in terms of the basic sale. It's a 23 square foot sale. It was uh, designed for ringeting, the, uh, the little sailing pram I built for my neat grandniece. Uh, it's okay, it's, it, 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 the, the little sailing pram performed quite well. <coughs> the, uh, I, I changed it a little bit on, for this one though, because this is mainly going to go on, it's going to go on ringeting also, but it's also going to go on the uh, uh, canoomeran. I dropped the foot. I didn't like that kick up uh, aft. Uh, the roach is uh, two inches. The leech is nine foot. The loft is seven foot eleven. I made it actually eight. And the uh, foot is uh, five foot eleven. I made it actually seventy inches. Uh, so that's the sale plan. And now we have to cut out the basic uh, thing. Since the uh, loft is going to be seamed and the foot is going to be seamed, that comes out of a corner of the nine by twelve. And the only thing that really has to be cut in the sail plan is the leech. And that's, a, that's with a two-inch roach. In cutting out the sail, since I had the spars already made, I laid them out on the uh, on the table and on the material for a guide, and then marked off the measurements that I had made uh, as I needed them. Uh, that worked out pretty well. And uh, once this was done, I was pretty much ready to start cutting out, which is what I started to do right here. Uh, this is just cutting out the leech. That's all you need. And to do the leech, uh, to get the curve. I put in a piece of aluminum flat bar, 8th inch, uh, in between some bricks and uh, drew out the line. Uh, part of the first frame was cutting out a little too soon. And then finished cutting it out once, uh, once I had that uh, roach drawn in. I did have to get up on the table, at least a little bit, to, to finish off the cut. But once that was done, that was done. There's a heck of a lot of material left over after cutting out this just a sail part. More than enough for really for a, a whole suit of sails in a small boat. Nine by twelve is a pretty big area. Look at this. This is this the green part is just the part for this sail. All that rest of it is left over. Uh, so you can get a couple more sails out of it, like a jib or a mizzen. Maybe I'll make a jib for the canoe around. And uh, plus all the other little odd patches and pieces that you need for reinforcement, whatever else you need. It's really a bargain for thirty bucks.
Okay, now we've got the uh, basic cell shape cut out. This is just a leech after all. Uh, we can do some of the pat reinforcing patches that I wanted to do. Uh, I like to, to uh, curve the uh, top of the head and the uh, clue of the sail, not the tack, that needs to be uh, a, a corner. But uh, that's what we'll do. And we'll use the old 4x15 pieces for this. We'll use that kind of a scrap for other things. And uh, cut out these, these uh, reinforcing pieces for the head, tack, and, and uh, clue. I'm going to use two on each side. That will give a, a, a total of five uh, layers of cloth. Uh, on each one. There'll, there'll actually be more as you'll see. I like to curve the back end of my patches so here's a piece of scrap uh, material for making the, uh, uh, making the counters in the kitchen and that'll give a nice curve to it. And we'll cut that out and, uh, and then in a little while we'll start gluing these up. We've got uh, a bit of gluing to do. We've got uh, three corners. That's uh, six patches on each side. That's a total of 12 patches. We start with the attack and then the uh, and then the clue. Uh, trace out the side, the shape, uh, and then uh, cut out a piece to fit, and then put on the first coat of contact cement. Uh, it's important to trace the shape of that curve uh, on the material so that you don't put any glue outside of the lines. You got to cut it within the lines here because otherwise it's going to attract a lot of dirt. But it stays tacky for a long time. Uh, but after putting on the uh, the first coat on the sail material, then we can put it on the uh, patch itself. The first coat, or the, or the first piece, first layer of the f of the patch. And it's also a good idea, since we know that it does curl uh, from the tests, to pin this down with some push pins. Uh, it will relax after a while, uh, but you need to do that. Uh, and you need to let it wait for about 30, 30 minutes before you put the second coat on. Uh, that's really the most amount of time in making this sale is waiting for the coats of uh, contact cement to dry. But we've got an answer for that later on. Uh, so we do the clues, attack, and the head uh, with the second coat of uh, contact cement. Uh, and let that dry. Now I made a, a decision here to reinforce the uh, leech with some uh, narrow pieces. Uh, on, on both sides and that did not turn out too well as you will see. I, I cut out a piece two inches wide and uh, pinned it down on the table, put on a coat of contact cement and I was all set after putting a coat of contact cement on the sail material itself on the leech uh, to put this together and I thought I'd have a nice reinforcement uh, for the grommets and the, uh, the sail of it. Now, the camera battery died here, so uh, we don't see the unholy mess that developed. But believe me, it was a mess. Uh, everything, once you took it up, it just curled up on itself, glued itself. It was completely unmanageable. So we're going to have to do something else about that. Uh, here's what it looked like, even while it was still on the table and still pinned down. It was, a, it was uh, starting to really curl up on itself. It was like a frightened snake. I mean, this didn't want anything to do with gluing down on another piece. So we gave up on that idea. So I didn't know what to do here exactly, but as it happened, I decided to use some white contact, uh, white duct tape. Now I knew that lousy, my term for Lowe's, had white contact, uh, white, white uh, duct tape, but they were out of it. But lo and behold, they had something called translucent, or transparent uh, duct tape. I liked that even better. So I got some of that. It seems to have the same uh, reinforcement that regular duct tape has, although you can see through it. And that's good because it uh, lets the uh, sail shine through. Now I left, since I already had one coat of uh, contact cement on one side of the leech, of the loft, I decided to leave it there and put the uh, uh, duct tape on top of it. This will give us a chance to find out whether it, it adds the adhesion, whether the, whether the duct tape really does hold very well because there's no contact cement on the other side and so we'll have a test in the first uh, trials. Uh, I rolled it down. Uh, it's good to put a little pressure on all this stuff. 
Uh, and because there's, there's a seam here, and it's going over the seam, I decided that I wanted to uh, roll it down in two directions so that I could get as close to the seam as possible. The other side, that's really not necessary because there's no seam over there. Uh, it seems only on one side, obviously. While I was at it, I put on a couple of reinforcing patches at the uh, right at the tack. I thought it wouldn't hurt. What the heck? A little more reinforcement, it's always good. Actually, later on, I found a better way of doing this too. Same thing with the head. Now, I had not, I had decided not to put that reinforcing material on the leech because I thought it would stiffen it too much and bulk it up too much. But with the transparent contact. Uh, 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 duct tape, I keep calling it contact tape, duct tape, that uh, seems to be an opportunity to reinforce the leech because it's not going to build it up a great deal and it's going to uh, add that little reinforcement so it doesn't fray. I think the butyl coating will prevent it from fraying, but nevertheless, I uh, would just as soon not uh, try that out. And so we reinforce that and we reinforce both sides. Now we want to put patches on the other side of the sail and uh, we uh, cut out the basic shapes and uh, coated them, pinned them down, put them on some paper so it doesn't stick to the table. That's important because this contact cement is really tacky. The old stuff used to dry fully and you could put paper between it to put it to position it. This stuff doesn't really dry until it cures in seven days. It's still sticky. So it, uh, it was a real mess with the, with the paper, trying try to put the paper in between to, to slide it in position. And, and trying to fit these pieces in, in to uh, a, a cemented area also was a problem, but you'll see I found a solution for that. It is important to draw this line uh, for the curve or for the, the extension of the patch uh, on the material so that you can carefully uh, glue within it. Now we're going to wait for that uh, uh, contact cement to dry, and while we're doing it, we need another little task. So I need something to, to place the, uh, a mast step for the mast when I want to try a trial hoist. So I got a jack stand, drill three holes in it, screwed it down to some uh, uh, plywood, and uh, used that. Now when you put these patches on, it's important to keep it folded over so you don't get that back piece in anywhere in contact with the other coat because it will stick instantly. But once you, you smooth it out and roll it down, why it does it take, takes very nicely. Very good. Now I found an easier way of doing this. Instead of cutting it to shape, just cut it generally to size, over ridge, and stick it down on some, um, put everything down on some paper, and then just cut it out and just trim it to size. Much easier, much faster. No double measuring, no trying to position the, uh, the, 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 the shaped piece on top of, of a shaped area to glue to. Just cut it out close to the, uh, uh, the edge and you got it done. And there we are. Nice patch. This material is really nice to work with. It's light, soft, uh, pliable. I, I really like it. Now here's where I, did, I had another modification. Instead of putting these little, little corner patches on, just run the tape all the way down. And uh, and, and then the, the other side will give you a, uh, an, another patch. Also, we can put another th a third piece on and have a uh, really basic, a, a splayed patch. Now it's time for the grommets. We need about 10 grommets for the luff, uh, none for the for the foot because I like a loose footed sail, and only of course a head, glue and tack. We do a little practice, run some multiple layers of material, and then set and then put in the grommets. Using the, uh, the punch creates the hole. Put in the grommet and the washer over it. These are half inch grommets. And then a couple of good whacks with a good heavy hammer. The half inch requires a bit of, a bit of effort. Three eighths not so much as you'll see. And we've got a grommet set up. That's the head. All set to go. Okay. Time to hoist.
Not quite so fast, uh, doofus. I forgot to put in the loft gringles. Oh, actually, grommets here. We got ten of those to put in. So we can put those in. Uh, punch the hole with the uh, wooden eye. You don't want too hard a hit on those. And you need a soft or resilient surface underneath it, otherwise you're going to dull the uh, the punch. Then put in the, uh, the grommets and then bang in the uh, with the punch, bang in the uh, washer. Don't need quite such a heavy hammer here because these are just three eighths grommets instead of half inch. But a few wax will do it. Keep turning the uh, the punch each a quarter turn each hit. That way it just gets a, a nice clean cut uh, rather than just cutting on one side and not the other. Once we've done that, uh, we're done with the grommets. This actually turned out to be a pretty nice looking sail. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of this sail for a pro prototype. It looks pretty good. Half inch uh, grommets at the head, three eighths at, on the luff, and uh, it looks decent. With the the uh, tr transparent uh, tape looks good. Here's the uh, three layers of uh, tape, and here we have finally the hoist. Now for a small boat like this, the best kind of uh, mast tubes or uh, are, are cable ties. The original plan, as you can see, if you look back at that, was for lacing. And lacing's fine, but uh, it cable ties are a lot easier. They're a lot better than hoops because uh, and, and the hoops would be a little theatrical on this board anyway because they're so small. But hoops have to be, you, you can't change them. If you, if you break one, you've got to take down the whole sail and, and redo it all and rebend it. But with a, with a uh, cable tie, you just cut it and put another one in. Very easy. You can cut off the... Well, I'm not done with uh, figuring this out, so I left the details on, but you can cut those off. Now, one of the problems with this sail, as you see in the creases, is that it's too blocked. I Originally, this did not have a, a, a block at the top of the head, mouth head. It had a, uh, a, a dumb sheave. Uh, so i got to change that uh, so I can get some more hoist. Also, uh, I've, when I repaired this gooseneck, uh, I didn't put in an attack, uh, attack hook, and also I need more clue out hole. This is too tight because I just I don't have any out hole on it, and so I can't uh, loosen it up. So we get rid of these, uh, with those things we can get rid of these folds and, and creases, and uh, I think we'd have a pretty decent sail.